Hello, Dr. G. Today I want to talk about one of my favorite topics, the sun. In my practice, I try to convince my patients to raise their vitamin D levels from the sun and not from supplements. The reason is that most of the randomized trials of supplementing vitamin D show that it doesn't help your health. Whereas on the other hand, having vitamin D levels naturally, and that's according to numerous observational studies, seems to protect us from many diseases. These are the same diseases that have the potential to make your life miserable. Things like chronic pain, autoimmune disease, heart disease, cancer, osteoporosis, depression, and others. A recent pooling of studies, a pooling of studies is called a meta-analysis of numerous vitamin D supplement trials. Overall, the result was that they showed no clear health benefit. A recent trial in old people even, and old people is defined as a tiny bit older than me, had five times more falls with high dose vitamin D supplementation compared to those taking the standard small dose of 800 IU per day. That sounds like the high dose is toxic. When people are taking high dose vitamin D supplements, I can usually tell from their labs because their vitamin D levels do rise, even if they haven't been in the sun. But in my view, it's an unhealthy rise because it wasn't from the sun as nature intended. So these patients might have a great vitamin D level on paper, but they're still at risk for all of the diseases associated with low vitamin D because they haven't been out in the sun. On top of that, their vitamin D level gives us, gives us a fake reading that they're okay and they're getting good sun exposure. Do we have evidence that more sun exposure is good for our health? Well, there's millions of years of evidence and it continues to mount. A recent report of a study following 30,000 Swedish women for 20 years showed that those women that did frequent sunbathing had a significantly lower mortality than women that avoided the sun. Now I know what you might be saying, you're not a Swedish woman. And you might be saying, Dr. G, you're not a Swedish woman either. Okay, I'll concede that point. But there could be a Swedish woman out there listening to this. But get this, Swedish women that avoided the sun but didn't smoke had the same mortality risk as smoking Swedish women. So smoking, sunbathing Swedish women had the mortality rate of a non-smoking Swedish woman that hides from the sun. Here's some evidence that you can smoke as long as you sunbathe and it won't take any years off of your lifespan. Now, what's the solution here? Of course, sunbathing and not smoking. That would be even better. But what about your dermatologist, your ophthalmologist, your doctor, and all the other health professionals telling us to cover up with SPF clothes, to always wear hats, to always wear sunglasses that block UV, and of course, slather yourself from head to toe with creepy UV absorbing toxic chemicals. Yes, I do believe sensible sun exposure is important. I also believe that it's possible to overdo the sun. But in my experience, I would estimate that 19 out of 20 people severely underdo the sun. Now you shouldn't sunburn yourself. And if you have all kinds of sun damage on your skin, like let's say you had a big barnacle growing off your nose, well, I would probably cover that up. Maybe get one of those umbrellas that they put in a drink. Now, I believe that many of us are too toxic and too altered by our environment to tolerate an optimal dose of sunlight. Just laying out in the sun by itself is not going to make you healthy. You need to start a holistic program that brings you back into natural balance. By doing this, you'll improve your body's semiconductor's ability to transmit the frequency of the spectrum of sunlight to power your cells and power your body. Here's some tips that might help. Try to be grounded when you're in the sun, meaning have part of your body planted on Mother Earth. Bare feet on the beach is my favorite. Bare feet on the grass is my second favorite. If you have light skin, tread cautiously. 
especially let's say it's June 21st in Tucson, Arizona, and you've been indoors for the previous six months. And on top of that, you're a Swedish woman. Be careful. You'll fry like bacon. But guess what? The human adaptation to sunlight was to lose all of our fur to expose our skin solar panels to the sun's rays. You think that was a mistake? I don't think so. And during those millions of years, we were in the sun a heck of a lot. If you have light skin, your ancestors were still in the sun a heck of a lot. It's just that it was more seasonal. For that reason, if you have light skin and you live near the equator or you live at high altitude, you do need to be more careful. But the average person I see spends an inordinate amount of time indoors and is out of balance. For those people, I recommend that you slowly develop your sun callus. Get back in balance and it will greatly improve your health and it will greatly improve your energy. This is Dr. G. Thanks so much for watching and please subscribe to our channel.